Hi, this is Mark Piller. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the most amazing features of Backendless, which is support for server-side logic. Uh, this is a feature that provides you an ability to modify or extend any of the Backendless services. You can inject your own custom code, which runs in the cloud. We manage all the scalability, security aspects of running your code and uh, you can really customize the behavior of your application or inject your uh, custom business logic. What you see here on the screen is our backendless console. When you log in, you will have uh, something similar. Here I created an application called server code demo. The business logic is available under the business logic screen. So if you click on this, you will see this interface, which includes several uh, modes. One of them is code generation, there is a debug tab and there is production. We're going to start with code generation. However, before we do this, let's create a few data tables just so we can attach our business logic to specific data tables and the API operations evolving around them. For this, I'm going to switch to the data screen. And here, this is a brand new application. I don't have any data in there. I'm going to create one table called order. And for that table, I'm going to create a new column called name. So for now, let's keep it very simple. So there is a table order with a column name. No data in there yet. Switching back to business logic, and we're going to use code generation. So notice here there is a bunch of different categories, one for each of the services that Backanalyst provides. Since we are going to be adding custom code for a data table, we're going to select data tables, and here we will register an event handler. An event handler includes a bunch of different events. In fact, for every API that Backendless supports for data service, there's going to be a corresponding event right here. Uh, for the scenario that I'm going to implement, I'm going to inject business logic that modifies any incoming orders before they're actually saved in Backendless. So for this, I'm going to select the create event and apply it to a specific table. You can also apply it to all contexts, which means that particular event handler will be applied across all tables but in this case we will use the order table the call timing has two options before and after and that means that if we select before that custom business logic will be executed before the default back handless implementation and if we select after it will be executed right after the default implementation click save now notice that we have an event handler right here event is create applies to the order table and notice there is also code that is automatically generated by back endless and this is the code that we will use to modify and extend in fact it says right here add your code here which is the specific method invoked right before an object is saved in the order table also notice that since we are working with the order table there is a class generated by back endless that represent and instances of these class uh, represent specific records uh, which will be placed into the order table and then for every single column there is a corresponding getter or setter now that the code is generated we can download this code and expand it locally since this is a zip file so the generated code includes project file as well as all the source code which we can use to modify uh, the project file is for IntelliJ IDEA. Let's open this up. Before we can run this code, we will also need an additional utility, which is a debugging tool that we provide in order to debug uh, the code that you write locally before it is being deployed to production. That utility is called Code Runner, and you can download Code Runner from the Backendless Downloads page. In fact, if we go there, This is the code runner. I have already downloaded it and uh, uh, it is sitting here in my file system. In fact, this is these are the contents of code runner. Uh, the code runner includes two special directories, classes and libs, and they are going to be empty by default. These directories are automatically recognized by code runner whenever you run your code locally in, for the debugging purposes. So it is recommended for you when you compile your modified server-side code that is generated by backendless 
uh, it is recommended to compile it directly into the classes folder, which is what, what I'm going to do next. At this point, the generated code doesn't do anything. And if we compile it, nothing is really going to happen. So let's introduce some business logic or some kind of logic for that matter right now. And that logic is going to be just a name modification. So we are going to take incoming order object, which is about to be saved in backendless, and modify the name of that order to, let's say, to put it into uppercase. That's all. So at this point, it is compiled, and we're ready to start debugging that code locally. The process of debugging is very straightforward. So right here, I have um, a command prompt window, which is uh, currently set, the current directory is set to the bin folder inside of the code runner SDK distribution. And in there, you will find uh, code runner to the sage if you're in a Linux system, which is what I'm going to use to run code runner. The very first time you run code runner, it will ask you for your application ID and special secret key that would identify your application in your code runner. These values can be obtained from backendless management console. If you switch back to console and go to manage, the very first screen, which is app settings, will include the application ID. I'm going to copy it and paste right here. And then the secret key, and notice the secret key is available in the console as well under code runner secret key. So at this point, code runner inspects all the code that you have compiled and deploys that code as a model into backendless. The actual code is still sitting on your local computer. None of the code is deployed into cloud when you are in the debugging mode. In fact, you can verify this by going back to console, select business logic, and then select the debug tab. In here, under data tables, notice that there is one event handler, which is exactly the event handler that we created, and it is now available for debugging. This red button indicates that there is a connection with your local code runner. Notice that the console and the actual backend are in the cloud. As you can see, the URL points to backendless.com. However, the code that I'm writing and uh, applying some business logic at this point is sitting locally. So at this point, I'm going to issue an API call that inserts a record into the order table. And for this, I'm gonna use CURL. I put together a command here. Uh, and all it does is it essentially adds an object into the order table. I have identified application ID, and I also specified the secret key for the REST client, and this is going to be my order name. So for name, I put my awesome order. Let's run this command. Notice that uh, the result that we got back already includes the name of the order in uppercase. In fact, if we go back to console, click data, and select order, we will see that our custom code has, has modified the order name and put it all into uppercase. And the most amazing thing mm -hmm. is you didn't have to deploy it into the cloud just to see it working. You can actually verify that it is working while the code is still on your own local computer. One of the benefits of having code runner in your code locally before you deploy it to production is you can actually attach to your code runner from your debugger and do step-by-step -step execution, inspect variables, and make sure that it's work working flawlessly before you actually deploy it to production. Let me show you how that could be done. In uh, my idea, I'm going to go to Edit Configurations and then edit a remote setup, which connects to my local process that runs on the standard port. I'm going to call this configuration order management and set a breakpoint right here, right where we added our custom code. And in my, com in my uh, CURL line where I'm adding a new order, 
So let me change the name of the order to something else. Let's call it birthday present. And run it. So now the breakpoint is hit. And the cool thing about it is the actual CURL command sent requests to Backhandless in the cloud. Backhandless connected to my local code runner, which uh, executed this line. And then since we have a debugger attached, now we can inspect the variables. And as you can see, here's a strongly typed object that represents our JSON object that came from a CURL request that we can modify locally. And let's run this line. And if we go back to our console, refresh the order table, we now see that our object is in place and was modified by our custom code. Now that we made sure that the code is working properly and does exactly what we want, the question is how do we push that code into production, into the cloud environment, so it runs completely independently of the developer's computer. And for this, there is this, another utility that is included into the Code Runner SDK uh, that is called Deploy. Let's switch to our Code Runner window here. And uh, once again, you see there is deploy.sh. Running this utility takes everything that you have developed and test it with Code Runner and pushes into production. So at this point, when once the code is deployed, utility exits, and all the code is now in production. We can confirm that by switching back to the developer's console, select business logic, and then select the production tab. Now notice here under data tables, here's our event handler, which we can disable anytime we want to. By default, it is going to be enabled. At this point, all API requests, which will insert objects into the order table, will be going through our event handler, which will be modifying it exactly as, as we wrote in the code. This concludes uh, the overview. Uh, be sure to check out server-side code. There is a bunch of different events for every single service you can override or customize it, uh, add your business logic, and thus uh, shift a ton of logic from your application to the server side, which will be executed centrally. Thank you, and as always, happy coding.